Welcome back everyone, this is Dom, and today we are, as promised, launching a shuttle from the Kerbal Space Station, Space Center, yes, that's it, on Kerbal Realism. Uh, <laughs> so, today the shuttle is ready for launch, uh, I have tested this various times, but I don't think I've tested this specific uh, orientation, uh, this specific cargo uh, for this flight. So, our shuttle makes it into orbit. It's going to release the cargo. You know what? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Who cares? Boom. Here we go. Okay. There's a little bit of that twang going on there. This thing is balanced for a while when it comes to uh, liftoff. This is a just a big uh, fuel tank, more or less. These rockets are just to kind of get us to about 200 meters per second, hopefully. Um, and then we'll kind of sit around that area for quite a while. These boosters will go away very, very soon. Uh, and then we're going to have to tweak our engine engines here just to kind of keep a stable flight, uh, mid-flight, which is it's very interesting. I, I don't know. Uh, I know that NASA can do this actively, you know, with their setup, with the, with the shuttles when they were in service. Uh, we're actually going to tip over just a little bit. I think that's good. Whoa, that booster did just did a little bit of the stuff that I didn't want it to. So there's our decent trajectory there. So as you can tell, our pitch is just about center. That means none of our SAS modules are really doing very much work. But as, uh, and it's kind of going up. So we're going to have to uh, kind of compensate for that by reducing our uh, thrust on this engine for now. Mostly until... Uh, it becomes balanced in the center again. Basically what's happening as these fuels are being used, this one's completely used now, uh, we are becoming balanced differently. So these thrusts are kind of uh, changing. Uh, where, uh, you know, sorry, the thrust is the same, but the center of gravity has changed, center of mass is changing. So our uh, thrust will be off center from the center of mass. I'm adjusting both sets of these now. It's going to be very interesting, this flight. Uh, I've had to do this flight a, cu a few times to kind of master this. I'm trying to keep this pitch in the center here. Okay, and watching also our Apple Apps height all at the same time. I know there's easier ways to get a shuttle into space, but I really, really wanted to do this na the NASA way. Uh, with it, uh, a fuel tank on the outside and... Uh, boosters and stuff like that. Uh, they use solid rocket boosters. I could have done that actually. This would have, uh, because of the way the, uh, the because of the way that all this was oriented, I could have actually done this all uh, with the solid rocket boosters the same way that NASA does it, but I felt like using the liquid ones just because uh, that's the first way I tested it. I, I didn't think about using solids. I could have been able to change Ooh, we're getting close we're getting close here. Um, I could have been able to uh, thrust limit the boosters and stuff like that, not actively, but <laughs> before we launched off, and it would have it would have worked. Oop. Anyways, uh, we are just about at the Apple Apps that I want to be at for this flight. So we're gonna start cutting these engines in three, two, one. Boop. Okay, cool. So this will bring us into a into space, which we kind of already are. We, we have, we're in the lowest part of the atmosphere. Sorry, the thinnest part of the atmosphere now. Um, as soon as we hit space, the music changes, of course. So our payload uh, will be revealed as soon as we ditch these tanks and are in a stable orbit. So these tanks here, this is the tank, this is a booster. Uh, it did have fuel in it. What's happening is all this fuel is going into here, mostly... Uh, Mostly didn't need to do that, but I wanted to be able to use all the fuel here uh, and basically have this thing as empty as possible when we lose it and have just a little bit of fuel left over in here, actually the full tank left in here for our orbital burn. So what I'm doing now is I'm actually burning towards, burning towards the horizon here. Hopefully you're going to bring up our periaps enough uh, within the amount of time that we need to. I'm going to need to adjust some of these boosters again, I think. There we go. 
Okay. Burning towards uh, our horizon here. I don't want. I want to bring up repair apps enough uh, to allow these tanks to re-enter the atmosphere, but have enough fuel to do a separate burn just with the shuttle itself uh, to make a stable orbit. That's what I, that's what our goal is here right now. I don't want to bring our our apple apps too high because that's a kind of a waste of fuel for this specific payload, which is our telescope, like I had said last time, uh, in last episode. I don't know if you guys watched the last episode. I'm assuming this title and the length of the video probably attracted more people, because this is going to be a short episode, as most of you guys probably can tell from the bottom of uh, in this area. Come on, you can do it. I haven't tested this specific configuration yet, so if this thing doesn't... Oh no, it's going to work. Here we go. Okay, we're going to get about 24-ish. Here we are, 25, that's decent. Uh, well, now we're going to ditch our tanks. We're going to move this up because we don't need that. We're going to ditch this tank. We have full fuel in here. I'm ready for detachment. <laughs> there that goes. We're going to kind of pull away from it just in case. So there is, that will re-enter the atmosphere and explode into a billion pieces. Um, if I was smart, I would have put a parachutes on all of those. Uh, boosters, and I really want to get the real shoots mod. I have actually unlocked a mod, uh, sorry, installed a mod that I uh, haven't used yet, so it's not going to be in the description for this video. We will use it the next shuttle launch that we do. Right now I'm just kind of burning these engines slightly to be able to bring us into uh, a stable orbit around Kerbin here, so we can release our payload. I don't know if I've said this before, but um, I'm a college student, and uh, a lot of my time in this game is kind of limited uh, to the amount of work I have, so this is a short video because of that factor, actually. Um, so this this video will be short, and I think the next video will be uh, short. They'll kind of be two parts to the same uh, mission here. So the first set of this mission will be bringing the shuttle into orbit, and then the next video will probably be bringing the uh, shuttle back and unlocking um, some uh, some of the the mods uh, nodes that we haven't had yet. So we are in an orbit, not exactly my favorite orbit, that's for sure. Okay, but it will suffice for now. So we are going to. Go ahead and get our commsats up here, our communications. You know what I mean. And then we're going to open up our payload. And to do this, I'm going to kind of spin it around. Oh man, that's a cool screenshot there. But I don't do screenies. It's, it's just an extraneous thing for me. Cool. So we're facing the sun, and it's going over the horizon. So I'm going to release this uh, probe. But first what I'm going to do is extend the panels. Uh, one time I had tested a different version of this satellite here uh, without extending the panels and it kind of messed us up here. So, there's that. We are going to... Ooh, ooh wrong direction. Oh my god. Oh, cool. It kind of like phases through it. That's interesting. Uh, <laughs> uh, so this is our satellite here. It has a, these really, really heavy hard drives from this mod, uh, the one that gives us this telescope here. Um, also has a bunch of communication stuff on it. This is going to be targeting mission control. And the one on the other side we will kind of mess with later. Uh, this will communicate with this shuttle, and the shuttle will communicate with a another satellite to allow this to move around for the first part. Just a couple of those um, things are released for now. Uh, those solar panels are released for this specific thing. So we're going to release it. Here it goes. We're going to back away from it now. And boop. Here we go. Back away from this thing. Allow it to kind of fly out into space there. So we'll close this. I le always leave cool stuff in my cargo bay for these tests. I've never had a shuttle before, so this is extremely fun. Um, I've never done this before, and it's... And it's it's just one of the things that I've always wanted to do. I guess my Kerbal Engineer has moved. 
So we are going to jump over to the satellite itself. Uh, like I said, it has communication with this shuttle and the shuttle has itself on a satellite uh, for right now. Uh, but we're actually going to activate this, uh, what is this thing called? Antenna, <laughs> and go to three. Cool. So this is mission control, this is three. That's adequate coverage for this guy's flight path. If you guys have watched any of my previous videos, you know where they're all positioned. Oop. So this is... Oop. Activate, please. Cool. So, uh, and we're also going to activate... There it is. Our omnidirectional antenna, even though we have a small one on here. I don't know if you guys can see it, but in this little crack here, there should be a uh, decoupler and I'm gonna be able to uh, decouple whoa close please uh, I'm going to be able to decouple this bottom part of the the uh, satellite here so we're gonna spin around to the other side so it's light outside when we do these things and yep yeah, shuttle 5 electric charge etc etc I know uh, the orbit's small enough uh, on this uh, around curb in here for it to be able to get all of its electric charge back with its solar panel, so I don't have to worry about uh, losing curbins in the shuttle, dying from suffocation or whatever. So we're going to go ahead and open our camera. This is a the satellite um, that I was telling you guys that I was going to design uh, last time. Oop, wrong direction. Let's go ahead and point this thing where I want it. I'm using uh, the hinge that we use on the shuttle, the hinge I'm using here, this rototron here is from Infernal Robotics, um, and there, I've mapped all of these keys on this uh, thing here to my keyboard. Telescope's open. We are going to go ahead and point this telescope at the moon for now. We're going to do this by hand. Uh, I'm going to control from here, because I think the other... Uh, <laughs> I think the other uh, probe is actually backwards. Flip this guy around. We're going to go ahead and show target on here. Oops, I lost my target. So we're going to go, we're just going to try to get this, uh, we're going to try out to see how the science works with this thing. I, I actually know how it works. I've tried it. And uh, this is very interesting to me. Here we go. So we're currently pointed kind of at the moon. Um, let's see if I can get a little bit better there. Uh, the hinge and this rototron here is actually allowing us to change the orientation completely around uh, if we ever need to without moving the ship itself. I don't know how well the target node would work for us. Nope, that's not working. Nope, nope, not happening. Okay, turning SAS on. Did not want that. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, that's the reason why. It's because I really don't trust the flight computer too much from uh, the uh, remote tech mod. Here we go. And there it is. Cool. There's the moon. We'll take a picture. Got science for the moon. Let's see it. Uh, check results. Cool. There's our science. We got 60 science for doing that. Awesome. Uh, and all of these hard drives down here will take all the science, as you can tell it's not there anymore, and kind of load it into the hard drives. And this is meant to decouple and re-enter the atmosphere. So we'll be able to, without coming back up here, and without having to transmit the data, uh, we'll be able to uh, take all the data from these readings and send it down for a recovery mission uh, back to Kerbin. So that's kind of the, the plan for this. Let's try Minmus now. Let's see how much that gives us. So let's move over to that node manually here. Man, it's kind of creepy looking at that, uh, that window, the small window there. There's Minmus. Hi, Minmus. I see you. Awesome. Really cool part about this mod uh, is uh, the telescope itself has adjustments in it. Uh, so you can kind of adjust your stable oh yeah there's servos that's what they call them 
kind of adjust your uh, picture there uh, automatically, which is pretty cool. Okay, and just a little bit up. Not too much. I'm not actually using the servos. Uh, sorry, the infernal robotic stuff. I really should be, but uh, right now I'm just kind of pointing it with uh, the actual thing itself. So there's Minmus. Let's take a large view of Minmus. Whoa, too much, too much. Cool. Uh, this mod is so cool. <laughs> so we got a picture of Minmus. And that will give us 80 science. Oh, well, that's interesting. Uh, now I'm going to point towards the sun. Oop, wrong direction, please. Other direction. Let's just do this. Let's make it easier on ourselves here. Here we are. Cool. And I can't set the target from that distance. Okay, here's the sun. Let's get the sun here, and I'm just pointing the uh, the satellite manually here. Wow, that looks so cool. Let's get a large view. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Science collected for the sun. Cool. Uh, let's see how much the sun gives us, and let's see what it says too. That's burning smell <laughs> in your corneas. It's your corneas. Oh my gosh. We got 220 science for taking that picture. Um, apparently we got two of those. Orbiting Kerbin. That's interesting. Orbiting Kerbin looking at the sun. Orbiting Kerbin looking at the sun. So we'll keep one and we'll reset this one. Just because I know we're not going to be able to just do doubles for it. Let's fill these up. Hundred and thirty five percent. Hmm, interesting. Uh this is really weird. Oh, I forgot to uh I forgot to fill up the hard drives for the last ones. Okay. Uh for the for Minmus, I forgot to do that. Where is Minmus? Minmus was over here. Set as target. Let's do one of these. Let's go back over to Minmus. Oop, I think it's this direction. There it is. And then we'll fill up our hard drives. And I swear, 135% of a hard drive kind of seems a little bit like a bug to me. Uh, not exactly sure why I'm uh, experiencing that kind of bug, but I can check the forum for it. The forum thread for that mod. Uh, you guys could too, if you'd like. The description has that information in it. Let's turn on caps lock here. Here we go. Little teeny tiny adjustments. Looking at Minmus now. Ooh. Whoa. Get it in the center. Here we go. Take a picture. Sweet. And then we'll fill up. This hard drive. Cool. So that has 67.5, 135%, etc. Um, cool. Let's take a look at the data here. View data. So we have looking at the sun. We have looking at the moon. We have looking at Minmus. Cool. This is really awesome. Keep, keep, keep. Awesome. Actually, I think it shows all of the data across all of them oh no never mind that's interesting so uh yeah that's uh kind of what i wanted to do this episode i'm going to uh bring you guys back if i ever use this satellite again um and i'm just going to i'm not going to do any uh more pictures or anything i'm going to look out into you know the distance uh, the distant planets with you guys um but Next episode, we will take the shuttle over there. Uh, we will try to land them home safely. So that's going to be it for this episode. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.